Welcome. My name is Jennifer Baron Prawl, and I'm the project manager for the South Southwest Mental Health Technology Transfer Center, or MHTTC. My pronouns are she and her. And for folks who are unable to see this video, I'll give you a brief description of what's being seen on the video. I am a middle-aged Caucasian female with shoulder length hair and a really big smile on my face because I'm really glad to be here today for this presentation. I'm very, very pleased to be your host. Today's presentation is titled The Four Agreements from a Peer Perspective and is facilitated by Mark Garnand, Melissa Montano, and Nathan Lawson, who are amazing. So you're in for a treat today. And we really do truly hope that you find this presentation helpful in your work. All right, a few things before we get started. Um, a quick disclaimer. This presentation is prepared by our MHTTC network and is under a cooperative agreement with the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, otherwise known as SAMHSA. So the opinions then that are expressed in the presentation are the views of our speakers and do not reflect the official position of the Department of Health and Human Services. I always encourage folks to take a minute to peek at this slide and remember that language matters our MHTTC network uses affirming and respectful recovery oriented language in all of our activities. In tandem with that, I always like to share our code of contact, conduct because we are really dedicated ultimately to providing events where everyone feels welcome. So we invite everyone here today to help us to achieve a really safe, respectful, inclusive and positive environment. So that just, I just want you to know, like, just be kind. That's what it's all about, be kind to one another. With regards to a few housekeeping items for today, we've made every attempt to make our presentation secure. So if for some reason we lose you for whatever technical issues, we'll just give you a registration email back so you can hop back on. We are in a webinar format. So attendees, you all don't have the ability to unmute or share your video. You can though, however, however, feel free to use your chat box. So feel free to jump on in, give comments and um, resources in the chat box. Jesse and I will be monitoring that. And also please use the Q&A box for any questions that you have for our presenters today. The session is being recorded and we'll be uploading them the presentation to our website probably within a week. And we are also providing CEUs for this event. And we'll get you a CU certificate also within about a week and get that emailed to you. We'll have a really brief survey then at the very end of our presentation. So be sure to complete that as well to give us some feedback. For folks who are new to working with our MHTTC, this, guy, this gives you a little bit of map um, of where the various regions are within the United States. We are located in region six. So that's this little purple area right down here. And really, we're all our work that we do is all about strengthening them the behavioral health care workforce. Um, so we're so super glad that you're here with us then today. So with that, I'm, I'm really excited then to share um, some background information about our presenters. All right. Mark Garnand is a New York, New Mexico native and grew up in the Wells Park neighborhood of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mark attended St. Mary's Elementary and Mid-School Valley High School and has attended institutions of higher learning, including New Mexico State University, the University of New Mexico, Central New Mexico Community College, and currently New Mexico Highlands University. Mark is blessed and grateful to have held positions in the state of New Mexico, two different Medicaid providers, an inpatient rehab facility, and a medication assisted treatment setting. Mark's challenges with alcoholism and addiction are ones he is grateful to have experienced for they have served as training for his current vocation, helping others through his lived experience. Mark is honored to be asked to participate with the South Southwest MHTTC in the state of New Mexico for today's presentation. We're so happy to have you here today, Mark, you truly are. I'm also pleased to introduce Melissa Montano. Melissa is a certified peer support worker trainer and holds two endorsements on her CPSW credential. One is a certified support housing peer specialist and the other as a certified older adult peer specialist. Melissa is a woman in long-term recovery. 
She currently serves the state of New Mexico as the program manager for the Office of Peer Recovery and Engagement, which is housed in the Behavioral Health Services Division and a part of the Human Services Department. Her work focuses on leveraging the lived experience of those with a mental health or substance use disorder as a way to improve the continuity of care and continuum of care. Ms. Montano has built her career on lifting people up and helping them make their way to the behavioral health field with integrity and a strong emphasis on ethics. Her current efforts focus on cross-agency collaboration and promoting a unified peer support model for the state of New Mexico and encompassing the CPSW workforce in New Mexico. And for folks who don't know Militia, Militia is outstanding and a truly um, wonderful person. So very, very happy to have her here today. Nathan Lawson. Nathan is a lifelong resident of New Mexico and he was born and raised in Southern New Mexico. Nathan is a person in long-term recovery, meaning that for eight years, he has learned new ways to cope with everyday struggles. Nathan is in recovery from lifestyle choice, substance use and mental health issues. He continues to work every day in our communities to enhance and expand peer support as a behavioral health service to help those that may be struggling. Nathan was raised in a Hispanic family. Culturally, he considers himself Hispanic. Nathan continues to advocate for all populations so that you too can recover once from the pain of changing so you can recover once the pain of changing becomes easier to endure the pain of remaining the same. Oh, Nathan, you're amazing too. We are so lucky to have you here today. So y'all, we have three phenomenal speakers um, who will be working with you all today. I'm gonna to go ahead and share the PowerPoint at this point for then our speakers and we will move forward from there. So with that, Mark, I'll pass the floor to you. Hey, thank you, Jennifer, and welcome everyone. Good morning or good afternoon or happy lunchtime, depending on <laughs> where you all are. Um, my name is Mark Garnan, happy to be here. Um, my pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, if I could describe myself, I, uh, I'm i wearing a, a button-up collared shirt. I have a short thinning hair, and I'm happy to be alive long enough to have thinning hair. And uh, uh, yeah, very happy to be here. I've been told I have a, a, pure, a pretty cute dimple, um, but I'll let you all decide that, um, uh, you know, through this presentation. Again, very, very happy to be here. Um, thank you to uh, South Southwest Mental Health Technology Transfer Center um, and UT Austin, of course, and Region 6. Hey, looking at region, there's not a better region out there, right, guys? I mean, look at us. Region six, uh, we rule, right? That's pretty cool. Um, and very happy to be asked uh, by Militia and, and Nate and uh, everyone else to speak on the four agreements today. And um, just a little bit background on myself, person in long-term recovery. For me, that's uh, not having to use a drink or drug for the past uh, 18 years. And uh, I've had some incredible experiences in both in my addiction and in my recovery. And it's, it's been such an overall blessing. And, and I wanna share that with, with folks uh, in my area, region six and around the world. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, thank you so much. Um, we are going to talk about the uh, four agreements um, and we are going to get into some learning objectives and things. But before we begin, I am uh, born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I think we, we, can, we can give a prize, militia can give a prize to anyone who can spell Albuquerque without Googling it, okay? Any, anyone out there that can spell Albuquerque correctly without Googling it, uh, militia, you can give them a, a t-shirt or a, an Opry t-shirt or something like that. And uh, we'll mail you that out to you. Wendy, that doesn't count. You know, you're from Albuquerque. So uh, there you go. Maybe Annalyn uh, Schwegel. Uh, that might be the winner right there. Yeah, but uh, it is a little difficult uh, to spell, but uh, it's, uh, it's the world that I live in. Um, Militia, Nate, do you want to introduce yourselves real quick? Hi, everybody. Hi, hi, everyone out there. And 
webinar land. My name is uh, Melissa Montano. And if I could describe myself today, um, I am wearing a bun in my hair. Right now I have glasses on and I love silver and turquoise. And so I'm wearing my big long silver um, earrings. Um, I am so honored um, to be here with Mark and Nathan and the MHTTC Region 6 is amazing. We are attached, New Mexico is attached at the hip with our Region 6 family. Very excited to say that one of our friends and peer leaders from Arkansas will be joining us next week for three whole days. We are very look, looking forward to uh, to hosting uh, Mr. McGill here with us. And we're gonna be showing him all um, of um, uh, Albuquerque and, and, and our new wellness centers. With that being said, I just, I just wanna say that um, I, was I was born in Denver, Colorado, um, and uh, my home is in Northern New Mexico. I was raised there in Tierra, uh, Tierra Maria, Ensenada area. You know, Mark also gave me a shot way before I knew that this was a possibility for me to be sitting here and presented with Mark Arnand and Nathan Lawson is a huge honor and it's a blessing because Mark gave me a chance um, as uh, you know, way before I even thought this was gonna be ha happening for me. He, he instilled hope, he instilled, um, you know, so, so much like uh, integrity and when he gave the last um, uh, training on the four agreements, I was a, a CPSW and I was just honored and blessed to be part of his, his you know, to, to be a, not a presenter, but part of the group. So with that being said, today I sit here very humble, very humble and, and very honored to be presented with Mark and, and Nathan and uh, to be part of this. And, Yes, Natalie, I hear you and I see your happy face there with the, with the hearts because there's just, there's memories coming back, right? You know, Mark, Mark allowed um, and helped um, Northern New Mexico when I was working in the detention center. He, he helped with a peer there and just who would have known that in, you know, 2022, I would be sitting on this platform presenting with Mark. And so we're, we're gonna give you a lot of kudos today, Marcos. And um, my, my pronouns are she, her, and Aya. And, uh, and I am honored that I have a voice today and that my heart sits up right on top of my left shoulder also. So thank you, Jesse and Jennifer and everybody in Texas and out there um, that were able to, to uh, attend today's presentation. Nathan, I'll just pass it to you now, sir. Thank you, Melissa. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I, I too am truly honored to, you know, be on this platform and be able to, you know, present around the four agreements. My name is Nathan Lawson. Uh, I am wearing a white long button shirt, button up shirt uh, with a blue tie uh, and I have short hair and a nice smile. Um, you know, one of the things about myself is I'm a person in long term recovery. And what that means for me is that for the past eight years, I have not had to use drugs or alcohol to cope with everyday life. And, you know, for someone like me, that's truly a miracle. And it all started by peer support, uh, just by somebody else saying, you know, who walk like me, who talk like me, who sounded like me. The only difference was they were living a new quality of life and they had a certain amount of time away from the drugs and alcohol and lifestyle choice. So for that, I'm really grateful. Uh, I'm a New Mexico certified peer support worker and I'm the training uh, coordinator for the Office of Peer Recovery and Engagement within New Mexico. Uh, short story about Mark, you know, I remember trying to get into the CPSW training when Mark was the program manager. And it was funny because, you know, I'd call him every week, like, hey, Mark, has my name come up for training? Hey, Mark, has my name come up for training? You know, just excited and eager uh, to become certified and, and to, you know, fill my toolbox with more tools. And uh, I just remember, you know, him always saying, Nathan, it's okay, man, keep calling back because the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Or the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Uh, and now I'm sitting in, you know, the training coordinator position and I, now I, I'm, you know, experiencing what it's like when you have a hundred Nathans uh, calling you every week, like Nathan has my name come up for training, right? And, uh, you know, it really gives me the opportunity to, you know, to provide compassion, right? And just say, hey, Nathan, remember, five years ago, you were sitting in that same seat, calling the same number, 
checking where you're at in the in the training queue. Uh, so, you know, Mark Garnan, man, big shout out to you. I wouldn't be here today without you, sir. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and pass it back. All right, all right. Thank you guys so much for those introductions. Um, real quick, what's going on in our state? We're still we're still battling COVID. We, we we're still uh, getting those resources out to people who are suffering from COVID and and uh, vaccines and and whatnot. Also, fires fires are are huge now in our state. Currently, we have two out of the three biggest fires that our state has ever seen since uh, since New Mexico was part of a, uh, a United States territory, a territory of Mexico, uh, part of the Louisiana Purchase, Northern New Mexico was uh, as far back as 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 history can tell that we are currently we currently have the two biggest fires, two of the three biggest fires that uh, have ever happened here in New Mexico and and um, Opry, uh, Militia, and Nate have provided resources, peer support workers uh, to those who have been evacuated. And uh, I feel our state government is doing a lot, We're doing all we can to, to, help, uh, to help those folks. Uh, but please keep that in mind, that is, that is happening um, for us in our state right now. Um, let's go to, let's go to uh, the learning objectives. Okay, um, again, I'll just read this with the current uh, leadership of the Office of Peer Recovery and Engagement, that's Nate and uh, Militia there. Uh, the state of New Mexico has nearly doubled the number of certified peer support workers in our state. I am currently a, a certified peer support worker. And just like everyone else, I gotta get my CEUs and uh, I struggle at the last minute to get those continuing education units, but uh, we, we get them done, right? Um, assisted, uh, assisting in various capacities, certified peer support workers, CPSWs have become a growing, growing and present force in the behavioral health network um, in New Mexico, that is that is true. Ever more so recently, with with these guys uh, leading that program, putting peer support workers in situations that we they never were before. Uh, again, with the fire evacuations, um, with people being displaced uh, or um, um, segregating from. Um, COVID uh, placed in hotels and having peer support workers reach out to those folks um, so they feel less, uh, maybe less isolated, you know, getting them food, uh, clothing, shelter, uh, you know, whatever they might need at that time. Um, as CPSWs, we come from a varied background and experience levels. We have a wealth of knowledge to share, helping others through our lived experience. I love that. We have a wealth of knowledge to share, helping others through our lived experience. Although may sometimes feel slightly uncomfortable or intimidated in some settings. Presentation of the four agreements uh, by Don Miguel Ruiz can be thought of as a daily roadmap of thoughts, contemplations, actions that will guide us in our personal and professional lives. Uh, next slide, please. So participants will learn how the Toltec concepts and ideas can help us realize our full potential as well-balanced and happy people. I'm a Libra, right? The scales, we wanna be well-balanced and, and uh, you know, well-rounded. Remove the weight of other people's expectations of us. Learn how to implement the four agreements in a new and challenging, in new and challenging environments and identify personal thought patterns and how the four agreements affect those thought patterns. So for me, really quickly, I was introduced <clears throat> to the four agreements by a musician. I'm a musician. I played the trumpet. I played for, for many years around Albuquerque and stuff. And um, I got fired. I got fired by a, by a salsa musician whose name is uh, Mr. Mickey Cruz, and uh, Mickey Cruz is a is a he's actually uh, from Central uh, Central America. He was an orphan. He made his way up through Texas and then to uh, to Albuquerque and started his musical career. I was very blessed to be playing with him. I think I was. I, sure I was still drinking at the time and uh he fired me one day he said he has this voice Marcos Marcos I can't use you anymore but bless you and he gave me the four agreements handwritten handwritten four agreements he said read this it'll help you and I think as a peer as someone still using alcohol and substances I was 
mad. I was, I did not like that. I was offended that someone would say, hey, first of all, you're firing me. And then you, you're telling me, uh, you know, I need help. That, by the way, that's the quickest way to, to end a friendship is to try and diagnose someone and then give them advice, right? <laughs> oh, that'll set your friendship off on a different, uh, a different uh, path. But he fired me. He gave me those four agreements and I, I read them and I didn't like them at first. And, and this must have been, gosh, 20 years ago. And I, and I slowly just started to read them and incorporate them um, into my life. And um, now I can honestly say that I try every day, even though I fail to incorporate all these four agreements in my life. Um, this, this presentation it is my, <clears throat> my personal view of how the four agreements have affected me and how I try to teach the four agreements to clients, members that, that I serve. Um, I'm positive there's someone out there that has read the book um, more thoroughly than I have or has maybe a, a better technical view of the four agreements. But again, this is just uh, my personal view of, of the four agreements. Um, and how it's helped me, you know, as addicts and alcoholics, we are kind of, we are kind of used to hearing certain things. Mark is an addict. Mark is an alcoholic. He will never change. I'm glad he's, I'm glad his children were taken from him. I'm glad his wife divorced him. I'm glad, you know, you hear these things for six months, much less six years, much less 19 years of, of my addiction span they start to get ingrained in your head and you start to think, man, is that all I am? Is that, is that all I'll ever be as an addict and, and um, someone who will never recover? And um, the negativity, the paranoia that goes on with other, other, other people's thoughts is, uh, you know, can creep in. And the four agreements really, really helped me um, in that way with uh, what people say, thinking about what people say, how I act, how I react to other, other people, um, other people's comments and just communication with, with everyone, with bosses, ex-bosses. I've been fired from many jobs, um, spouses, ex-spouses. I've been married a couple of times, all kinds of different relationships. Um, the four agreements. Don Miguel Ruiz. Don Miguel Ruiz. Uh, Don is Don is a surname. It it means um, Mister or Sir or you know if you think East Coast Don the uh, the head of a mafia mafia family Don <laughs> sometimes is used in that way. But it's uh you know it's the leader of a family uh, a leader of, a, of an organization. And uh, the author of the book is Don Miguel Ruiz, first published. This book was first published in 1997. Uh, Co-author is uh, Miss Janet Mills. It's currently in 46 languages. And um, it's inspired by the spiritual beliefs of the Toltec people. Uh, the Toltec were, uh, people were a native people of, uh, of Mexico around the area of Tula, the city of Tula, which is uh, in the state of Hidalgo, which is about 50 miles north of, of Mexico City. And um, the um, Toltec people predated the Aztec uh, people of that same area. So that's where it, it came. Uh, that's where it came about the origins in it. Um, Miguel Ruiz is, uh, was born in Mexico. He's about 70 years old. He's, he's, he was born in 1952, the youngest of 13 children. Um, he actually went to school in Mexico and became a surgeon and uh, practiced medicine for many years before he went into this uh, new thought movement of authors who uh, uh, focused on ancient teachings and uh, the spiritual environment. So I have to say this book has, has changed my life. Um, and I, I, I want to tell people about it. I'm sure a lot of people know about it, but I want to express that. It's one of only three books that I've ever read in my life. OK, I've uh, I read Lord of the Flies. If any of you are my age, we had to read Lord of the Flies right in high school. And we had, and we had to report on that. And that was pretty interesting. Um, I've I've read The Old Man in the Sea by Hemingway, because that was one of my dad's favorite books. And when he passed, I, I read that that short books, that short book. 
Um, I've read the full agreements and then I've, I've read the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. So I don't know. That's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> those are the four books that I've read. Not, not too bad of a selection, but uh, yeah, um, I'm happy to have the four agreements in, in, in that uh, pattern there. So uh, next slide, let's move into the four agreements. Again, four, four simple um, agreements that I try to live by every day and uh, every day I fail, but it, it, it's worth going through and, and uh, talking about these agreements and uh, seeing how they apply to our lives. The first agreement, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity, say only what you mean. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or gossip about others. Use the power of the word in the direction of truth and love. And this is, uh, this is the hardest, one of the hardest agreements. Um, impeccable, if we break down that word, it means without sin. Um, and really what we're doing is taking responsibility for, for our actions and uh, not taking, not making judgments against other people's actions and what they, what they do or what they say. Um, carefully choosing our words. Um, there, there's so much that can be said about this, but when I think of it, I think of breaking it down as uh, if there were no strata in the world, if there were no currency, if there were no bosses and workers and worker bees and queen bees, what would be our currency? I believe our currency would be our word. If Mark said, hey, I'm, I'm gonna help you do X, Y, Z on this day and I will be there and I do not show up, my currency is no longer valid with you. It's no longer valuable with you. And that's the way I try and think about it, you know, and remove all money, remove all possessions. What, what do we really have is our, is our word and our integrity. And I try my best to, to keep my word and to, to do what's, uh, what's needed to keep my word. But, you know, there's things that, that come up. Um, there's always challenges to this. You know, there's that saying like, does it need to be said? Does it need to be said by me? Does it need to be said by me right now? And sometimes I have a tendency to kind of just blurt out whatever I'm thinking, um, you know, and not, not listen and not listen, not plan what I'm going to say um, at that moment. Um, in AA, I had an old, an, a, a, an old timer tell me, he said, son, I never learned nothing while I was talking. And I've always remembered that, you know, I think I'm just like the next guy. I like to hear myself talk sometimes, but I'm, I'm never going to learn anything unless I am impeccable with my word and listen and see what, see what happens there. Um, there are, there are so many, this, this is, this is a very important agreement. Uh, I'm going to turn it over real quickly to uh, Nathan, uh, Militia, and uh, see if they have any comments on this, this first agreement. Thank you, Mark. Uh, man, you know, first, first of all, I want to start by saying, um, you know, these are right. If you look at them and glance at these four agreements, they are very simple. Uh, but to practice on a daily basis is a lot harder to do. Um, so when it comes to, you know, being impeccable with your word, uh, you know, I, too, fall short on this one. Um, and, you know, before I, I read these four agreements, I had a I had a mentor in my life that, you know, one of the things I was working on was keeping my word, right? Following through with what I do or say, you know, just like Mark said, you know, thinking about things before I blurt them out uh, and, and things like that. And it and it stuck with me is that this individual told me just like this, Nathan, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Right. And and of course, right when I heard that, you know, just to be honest with you all, I come from you know, my past was, I was not impeccable with my word, right? I would, you know, tell people I was going to do things, not show up, uh, just the whole nine yards, right? So coming into recovery, right, and practicing this agreement, 
um, has really been life changing for me, right? Today, I'm able to, to hold a job, keep a job, because I do my best to be impeccable with my word. Uh, today, I'm able to hold and maintain relationships in my life because I am able to practice uh, being impeccable with my word. And in turn, the quality of life that I'm living today uh, has just, it, it's significant, right? Um, so that, that's really what I got to share on the, the impeccability with your word. Um, how about you, Melissa? Wow, you guys are, you guys are amazing. Um, you know, um, in my past, thank you, Mark and Nathan. Uh, I, I, I have this thing with me and it was, I had a soul sickness. I had a very bad soul sickness and I wasn't born with that sickness. Um, I too have had mentors in, in, in 12 step programs. And, you know, when I heard Mark talk about, you know, um, about what his mentor told him and a, 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 a lot of the female mentors I had in Alcoholics Anonymous would tell me, Mijita, you need to take that cotton out of your ears and put it in your mouth. You have nothing to give yet. You just keep coming back and let us love you till you can love yourself because every amount, an ounce of um, dignity and, and, and uh, truth went away from me. And, and, and from this head to this heart is a very short space. But for folks like me living so many years, 25 years of the over and over, you know, I, I didn't practice being impeccable with my word back in the day. Today, it's a daily practice. You know, I, I too am employable and what a great feeling that is for me. And I get to speak with integrity. Yes, yes, I do. You know, I have that, oh, maybe, you should, and it slips. I mean, maybe you shouldn't say, you shouldn't have said that, Militia. Or, um, you know, when I when I get to go visit up north uh, where I'm from, you know, hi, Mijita, did you hear about that? No, I didn't hear about that. I don't wanna hear about that. You know, so it, it's it's hard to 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 not get back into the, you know, what we used to be like, if that's, if that's, I remember one time taking a motivational interviewing class and it was with Mr. Andy Anderson. No? And he would, and he said, you know, you've got to practice motivational interviewing. I feel like with the four, four agreements, we, we have to practice daily because it's really hard. It's really easy for us to go back and we're used to the bad behavior of our, and you know, and it, we can do that very quick. But being good is so not good, but you know, um, being able to be impeccable and the rest of the four ingredients and 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 they go they coincide for me, for me, uh, they coincide with with my program in my life, and and being being you know on time and and not just impeccable with you all. It's the way I speak to myself, being impeccable with what how I how I treat myself every morning. There's mornings where I, where I get up and I forget to say, you know, you are amazing, you're, 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 you're beautiful, you're going to get up, you're going to go and you're going to, um, you know, help people help themselves. And sometimes I forget and I wake up and I'm talking bad about myself to me, you know, so I've got to make sure that being impeccable also not mean I have to treat myself with every word, every word um that I that I that I give that I talk about with you all so just this is really an amazing experience thank you Melissa thank you Nathan you know um those are some those are some real life testimonies there um I think um so the way I try uh and employ this with new peers, maybe peers that are moving into a new job, semi-professional, professional atmosphere is uh, our currency, okay? Our currency was damaged through years and years of telling people, hey, uh, this is the last time I'll drink. This is the last time, promise, I'll use this substance. Um, you know, our currency has diminished over that period of time. It takes time for that currency to build itself up. And that's what I tell my peers. We can't, we can't go three months, six months, a year, more than a year clean and say, hey, you can trust me now. You can trust my word. You can trust what I'm saying to you. 
that's not our call. That's their call, right? That's their call. And that, that you know, is related to the history that you've had with that person. They will tell you when your currency, your word is good again. And a lot of times we're new in recovery. We're excited. We say, hey, I'm clean. You can trust me. You know, you can give me the keys to the car. You can trust me with the house. You can, and uh, that's not, that's not on our time frame. but you know, um, another thing that I try and tell people is express how you feel, express how you feel in, in a professional environment, you know, Hey, how are you doing today, Mark? You know what? I'm today. I'm struggling today. I have things going on at home and my daughter, this, and my mom needs help. And, uh, I'm struggling today. Uh, versus I'm fine, you know, I'm fine. You know, it's okay to say those things. I'm struggling, um, but I'm here, you know. Um, there's nothing wrong with saying that. One of my favorite phrases is, how you doing today, Mark? I'm stable. <laughs> I'm stable. Hey, I'm stable today. I'm here at work. I'm, uh, you know, I'll let you know if something happens, but, you know, I'm stable. And, uh, Letting those peers know that, hey, it's okay to say that you're not, uh, that you're having challenges today. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I'm a peer in recovery and today I'm having a hard time, but I'm doing the best that I can. So do we have any other comments from people uh, about the first agreement that would like to share in the chat? Um, anything that um, might be related to the first agreement? <clears throat> I read the book and used it. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's okay to not be okay. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, um, I wanted to call I, also, this is just the first agreement and I hope we're doing good on time. What are some of the caveats to the first agreement? What, what are some of the things that were kind of on the fence with the first agreement and, and, <clears throat> I'll just throw this out there. I, I, I like to joke around, you know, one of my favorite sayings is uh, I went to Valley High School here in Albuquerque, which is in a um, semi-rough neighborhood in Albuquerque. And one of my favorite sayings is Valley High School was the best six years of my life. And everybody laughs and say, ah, you know, that's funny. And uh, <clears throat> I use that a lot just to kind of break the ice uh, or for people that I know that went to Valley. And I, I think about that. Am I, am I being, you know, am I, might I offend a teacher, uh, an administrator or anyone else that went to Valley? You know, there's some very prominent people that have come out of Valley High School, senators, uh, astronaut Sid Gutierrez. There's some, uh, the UNM football coach is, is from Valley High School. And there are a lot of great people that came out of there. And I think to myself, am I being totally impeccable with my word? There's some other situations there like joking around, um, and I have to watch that with myself, you know, what, what we say, just like the things that were said to me back in the day, um, you'll never, uh, um, you'll never, you know, not become an addict, Mark, you'll never recover. A am I, am I pushing those values forward and giving people uh, the most positive outlook with, with whatever, uh, with, with whatever I'm talking about. So um, I have to keep that in mind. Um, let's let's go on any other comments giving my best wait <clears throat> give my best yes sometimes that means saying no absolutely absolutely especially in new jobs um <clears throat> and thank you for that comment that was uh kai um in new jobs as professionals we want to please we're in a new environment hey i'm going to really exceed at this job right and maybe your boss will ask you to do 10 things that are impossible and if we take a step back and say, hey, you know what? I'm new in recovery. I'm learning this computer system. I uh, can't do all those things. Uh, it's not possible for me to do all those things. And uh, being truthful full with that can go a long way in your employment. Yes. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on to the uh, second agreement. And that is don't take things personally. Oh, my gosh. Because <sighs> it's all about me, right? It's all about me. Nothing, uh, nothing others do is because of you. What others do or say is a projection of their own reality. I love the way uh, 
uh, Ruiz uh, frames that is a projection of their own reality. That's not my reality, that's their own reality and they're projecting it upon us. When you are immune to the opinions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. Um, this is so, <clears throat> this was so groundbreaking for me because I think a lot of us early in recovery and, and in our addiction, we're in, we're in a self-centered mode. We're in a very selfish mode. Everything is about me. Um, you know, all, it all centers around me and, um, we, we have to take a step back and look at other people's, uh, motives for, for doing things. Um, it's, it's very hard for me to, it was very hard for me to take criticism early in my recovery because you don't know what I've been through. You haven't been in my shoes and you don't know my traumas as a little child and in adulthood and you don't know, and it's all about me. And now uh, 18 years in recovery, it's, it's, uh, it's not all about me. It's about, it's about taking care of myself and knowing when to not internalize those opinions um, of others in a way that's detrimental to my own, um, my own recovery. Um, taking things personal, um, the opinions of others. Um, he goes, uh, Ruiz goes on to say there's, that each individual has a unique worldview. So um, how do we know what, if a comment is said, in anger or in haste, we don't know what's going on with that other person. We don't know if that person had a tragedy just happen to their family, a death in their family. We don't know if that person's home just burned in the wildfire. We don't know if that person's uh, loved one contracted COVID and um, there's just no way of knowing. All we can do is take a step back. And, and uh, what I do is I think of how can I help that person, even though they just made a rude, maybe a rude comment to me, how do, how can I help this person? You know, it turns into a helping uh, type of, of, of mode for me. And um, knowing that that's not who I am, that that comment was not made uh because of me it was because of that person's own uh, own reality and what they're going through um i'll let and militia talk about that real quick if you have any examples nathan uh, or militia okay Th thanks mark Th this is a hard one because you know um I'll think of my family right now because you know, um, especially my, my my son. You know, here, you know, I've evolved in the past thirteen years almost. Uh, July seventeenth of two thousand ten is 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 my birthday, um, or um, and 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 my son. I I I loved what you said earlier about having people watch you walk and they make that decision of when they're ready to, hey. Can I just share you guys that, and I shared this with my friend Natasha on the phone last night. You know, this last weekend was just an amazing gift to me because it showed me that my son of so many years of like not being even to trust me has shown, has, has let me not borrow, <laughs> but he, he, he allowed me to watch my grandkids for three nights and he allowed me to get in that vehicle and drive those kids to my grand to their great grandparents' house. Um, how, at the beginning of my my sobriety, I did not take that personal when he said, "No, mom, no, no, no." I, you're, you're, and I would take that so personal that I I wouldn't speak to him. I wouldn't call them. I would like isolate. There was just so many behaviors that I had to learn unlearn 
And there was just so many guidance from so many pe so many people that 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 walked me through situations where you know what, Militia, you might not work if you're not employable. <laughs> you uh, you you don't go to jobs and you don't. I had a very bad anger problem uh, when I got clean and sober, and um, and then mixed with you know what was going on in my mind and my mental health, I just know that I had to fix three things mind, body, and soul together. And, um, and then my walk became a little graceful, a little bit more graceful. And, um, and, I was, uh, and I was able to not take things personally, especially in work. You know, um, and when I did get fired, because early sobriety for me, I did not, and I could not keep a job. Um, and I did take things personal, like, you know, well, you're, you're late. Well, you have to be on time. You know, you have to give back to your job. You have to put in if you want uh, if if you want the benefits. You know, for years today today I, I I have benefits like, and you know, and I can give back, and I am employable, and and I and I don't have to take things personally. Um, if you know, if if I don't agree with what you know my leadership says it should be like, um, it took years. It took years, Mark, and that's why I love that these these agreements so coincide, and they're like fibers of our life. And if we really look at the words, you know, um, and 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 take it in into like our everyday life, we 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 really are just doing the best that we can on a daily basis. And um, so I, I think thank you for letting me comment on that, Nathan. So get uh, so man, this one is hard. I mean, that was awesome, Alicia. Thank you so much. And Mark, uh, you know, for me being a, you know, not taking things personally, uh, you know, especially being a New Mexican, right? Is like, you know, when I was growing up, man, it's like, hey, if if, if you look at me wrong, uh, even if you don't look at me, I'm gonna think you're you're like talking, you know, bad to me or or whatever it may be. Um, but you know, coming into recovery, right, and you know, doing my best to practice not taking things personally, uh, for me has really, you know, changed the lens that I look through on a daily basis, right? And what I mean by that is, you know, it's helped me, you know, by not taking things personally, practice empathy, right? Uh, you know, I, I'm part of a 12-step program, and, you know, I, I, had a, I had a sponsor of mine uh, many years ago, and man, I would call him like, hey, man, yeah, this guy cut me off, you know, going down here and I'm going to chase him down and I'm going to, you know, tell him that he needs to learn how to drive this, this and that. And, you know, it's funny, man, because his only response every time I would call him about my boss, about my my fiance, about my brother, about some random person that wasn't even looking at me. Uh, the one response he always had for me was Nathan, pray for them. Right. And when I heard, I mean, every time I would hear that, I'm like, do you not hear me? I'm angry. I'm upset. This person did this to me. They don't know who I am. They don't know what I've been through, like Mark G was talking about, right? And in all reality, right, today, man, you know, and I fall short, right? I still think take things personally on a daily basis, man. But, you know, having this awareness, right, that piece of awareness, I'm able to reflect, right, on my behavior and my choices and say to myself, Nathan, are you taking this personally? And do you think you should pray for this person, right? And every time I practice that and I pray for the person, that anger and all of that negativity goes away. And I'm able to say to myself, man, maybe this person's having a bad day, Nathan. You know, and, and for me, that feeds my soul, man. So with that, I'll pass. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Militia. Um, Anna Lynn said, hitting the pause button which is always good in the comments. Yeah, Natasha said uh, she doesn't take things personally anymore and uh, gives her best every day. Um, you know, this is uh, this is really uh, life altering to me. And, and when I try and convey this to other peers who are starting professional uh, careers, uh, I say, take everything with a grain of salt. Take things as a chance to improve. Take all comment, comments as a chance to improve, not criticism. Hey, Mark, you need to, I'm terrible at, uh, at uh, Excel, right? 
And every time someone says, hey, you need to take a class on Excel, I try and yeah, <laughs> push that out of my mind, but I know I have to do it. So all you peers who are just starting, take it as constructive criticism on what we need to need to learn to improve on and uh, not as, as a criticism or taking something personal. Okay, let's go on to the next um, agreement. Thank you. Do not make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid a misunderstanding, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. I totally agree with this. I think we're not good at asking what we want as peers early in recovery. Here's something that I see a lot. Peers, we don't feel that we're worthy of things. Hey, I really want this position as a CPSW level two, and I'm only a CPSW level one, but I don't, ah, it's more money and all these blessings that occur to us, somehow we don't, we don't feel we deserve them. Communication, communication. Hey, I want that CPSW level two position, and I want to advance in this company as far as I can, uh, as quickly as I can. What's wrong with saying that? What's wrong with asking for those, for those um, blessings, you know, making that, that verbal, uh, that verbal request. In, in not making assumptions, um, this might be controversial real quick, but men and women, we have different ways of communicating. <laughs> you know, me and my spouse, uh, you know, men, I, I prefer to be communicated as if I was a, a 10 year old boy. Say, Mark, I need you to do this. And I want this and we should go here. I'm not good at I'm not good at connecting the dots, you know. I think women are are brilliant communicators, um, and uh, it's just a difference in in communication. So um, I always tell I always tell my my new uh, my people new in recovery it's okay to express what you want. It's okay to to let people know right right off the bat what you want, what you need. Nobody knows that you're hurting inside. Nobody knows that you're having a bad day. Nobody knows that you're sick or ill, you know, and in our head, sometimes it's like, well, don't they know? Doesn't Nate know that I'm feeling bad? Can't he see that? You know, can't he tell by my voice? No, we, we can't. We have to make those things. Uh, we can't assume that everybody knows uh, all these all these things about us. Um, eliminate that drama. Eliminate that drama. Again, this is, this is self-centeredness. Again. Everybody should know what I'm feeling right now. You all should know because you just should, right? And that that doesn't happen all the time. Uh huh. And uh, any comments on that, Nate, Militia? Yeah, I, I uh, there was one point in my life that that was great, Mark. Thank you. There was one point in my life where I thought I was a Jedi, right? You know, and for the folks that know about Star Wars and the Jedi's and stuff, right? They were able to do like you know the Jedi mind thing. And just, you know, be able to tell what's going on with someone. And, uh, you know, I thought I was a Jedi and I thought everybody around me was a Jedi. It's like, hey, man, you should know what I'm going through. Can't you see, you know, just like Mark was sharing, can't you see how my face looks or the way I'm walking or the way I'm sounding, you know, and, and taking that expectation, right, out of my daily life, you know, instead of expecting this from someone or expecting that from someone today, this right here, not making assumptions really helps me with that. What you got, Melissa? Just really, really quick. Um, before, when I applied to be uh, the program manager, I directly assumed that I wasn't going to make, I mean, I assumed that I couldn't do this, that I belonged working uh, all my life, uh, direct care at, at the Rio Riva County Detention Center. Um, the, and that was my path and I was going to retire from that and that's what I was going to do. And so I kept telling myself, as my negative thoughts telling me, I can't do this. I can't even apply. I am not good at Excel. I am not, but little did I know that I have surrounded myself with tool P and me, being people as tools. Nathan is amazing at all that. Mark Arnan told me, you can be a program manager, you, and we were at a, 
having dinner at, at, at a place. And he, he named us all as like, you all could be program managers. And um, I didn't know that Nathan was going to be able to teach me about Excel and, and um, that, that, the, that the women in this, in this um, leadership here at BHSD were going to teach me about scopes of work and that my wellness, the wellness centers that the state um, 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 funds were going to teach me about their programs and how awesome it is to have a 501 3C and how, and the struggles that, you know, I, I assumed that everything was, that I was not going to be part of, be able to like fit in on, on so many levels and um, asking questions with this, just with this one agreement, like, like Mark said, you know, it, 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 we're transforming lives if we would just ask questions and, and not assume. So thank you. Thank you, Militia. Thank you, Nathan. Those are some awesome uh, examples. Uh, in the chat, Peter says, uh, "If you don't ask, you don't, you won't get what you what you want, right? You you you're gonna you're gonna miss 100 of the shots that you don't take." Um, Peter says, um, "Communicate your needs, and um, usually a no is not personal, right? Usually, when someone says no, it's not personal." Um, yeah. If you have any questions uh, from Jesse, please put them in the Q and A. Um, I love that we shouldn't make assumptions. Um, that's an awesome story, Militia and Nate. You know, if we we automatically assume, hey, I have a record. I have a, you know, I've done some things in my life. I can never be program director for the state of New Mexico. I can never um, advance above this point, whatever that point in your head is. And yeah, we. Uh, we need we need to 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 break those those barriers, uh, not make those assumptions at all. Um, any comments on that from anyone else in the chat? Natasha. Oh gosh, thank you, Natasha. Um, Wendy. Sometimes when you do ask, you get more than you ever thought you would have. Correct. Correct, Wendy. Thank you. Wendy is is awesome um, here in our state. Wendy Linebrink Allison, and she has she has taught me a lot about uh, taking chances and stepping outside uh, my comfort zone and doing things um, that I never would have thought I would have done. Thank you, thank you, Wendy. Um, let's go on. If no other comments, let's go on to the final agreement. Oh my gosh, here we go. Always do your best. Always do your best, and. Uh, and uh, if you <laughs> you come from New Mexico and you 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 know we have our Hispanic and Native influences here and it's uh, it's all or nothing right it's all or you're either one hundred percent in or or you know and uh, anyway always do your best your best is going to change from moment to moment it will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick under any circumstances under all circumstances simply do your best and you will avoid self judgment self abuse and regret regret to me this is a combination this is this is the waterfall this is the trickle down of the first three agreements combining all those things into this this final always do your best i i, I you know i like <clears throat> i like in this step to working in a factory you know we're working up in uh, uh, Dearborn, Michigan, and we're making Chevy trucks. And uh, and uh, Monday, Tuesday, we had we made gosh, the conveyor belt was rolling, man. And we put together like 200 trucks, and we we kicked butt, and we really did. And then on Wednesday, there was a computer glitch, and one of the the, the conveyor belt broke down, and we man, we put together like 10 trucks, all of us, and everybody was kind of down, and we you know we did, and you know. On both days, did we do our best? Yes, on both days we were suited up and ready to go and working and, uh, you know, on one day we made 200 trucks and on the other day we made 10. We, we did our best in both situations and we should be, we should never judge ourselves in, uh, in, in, doing, in doing our best. The outcome will never, ever, ever, ever be the same, right? Our days are never the same. Our, I, you know, I work in, from home sometimes and it's a nightmare. Internet's down and the power goes out and, uh, 
you know, every everything's going haywire, but we, we can uh, we can be confident in ourselves if we always do our best and uh, and put forth put forth that that effort every single time. Um, guys, you have any comments on that, Militia? Oh man, Mark, thank you. There's so much freedom in this fourth agreement, and really, I really wish we had like two hours, man. I'm like sitting here, like, you know, hanging on every word Mark sharing, hanging on every work Militia sharing, man, because, you know, I'm being reminded, right? I'm being refreshed, man. And, you know, for this fourth agreement, it brings me so much freedom, right? Today, man, I am so free because I do my best at every aspect of my life to do my best, right? In my relationships, in my professional life, whatever it may be, you know, I had a, I had a uh, mentor in my life. And one of the things that I was struggling with was relationships, right? And, you know, when we were working through that, right, I worked the 12 steps around relationships, right? After I worked around drugs and alcohol, I then said, hey, man, you know, I got to, now that I'm done with drugs and alcohol, I need to address my issues with relationships, right? And, you know, just kind of let you guys know the next thing I'm going to work on is selfishness. I'm going to work the 12 steps around selfishness and self-centeredness uh, because that's me today, right? It just, it still is ingrained. You know, um, but this brings me so much freedom because he taught me just like this. He said, Nathan, you are so worried about your relationship. You're putting so much energy into worrying about what she's going to do, you know, what she's thinking or what she's planning to do. But in all reality, if you do your best right in that relationship, you're honest, you know, you're a good partner, uh, you're compassionate and you're full of love. If anything was to happen at the end of the day, you'll be able to tell yourself. I did my best, right? And it goes hand in hand with that self-abuse and regret and self-judgment is that today, man, I don't have to do that to myself, right? Today, I'm free from that judgment of myself in that way. Uh, what do you think, Melissa? I, I just want to say that I am honored. I'm blessed and honored to be able to do my best and that I'm above ground to, to get, to be able to even to do my best today. And, and I'll tell you why, guys, it's because when I get when I get from my father and my mother that they see me doing my best, then I know that I'm doing something right. And from people that I just did this presentation with, you know, and the folks that showed up and telling us, you know, daily, we're we're only doing our best. But it, it really feels really good and heartfelt when I, when my father points his finger at me and says, "Mijita, I can see that you're doing your best, and that's all you can do." Thank you, guys. Oh, you're on mute, Mark. There you go. Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for sharing that, Nate and Militia. It's it's uh, what I try to convey to new CPSWs, people, you know, coming into into our field of work is uh, <clears throat> the self ridicule. You know, the self judgment. Don't don't let that be a part of of what you're. Uh, of of what you're doing again you the results will never be the same always do your best and uh, uh have a have a uh have a positive outlook on your day jennifer i know you're going we're 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 very are we close to the end here i can't believe how quickly this time went by mark oh gosh, gosh this is okay. outstanding and and yes we we are at our time if you want to uh, if you have any wrap-up words or if you'd like me to share any final slides from your deck i'm happy to do so um sure i think we went through the agreements uh, other things are just personal things about me uh one thing that i'll convey really quick is i had a counselor who after i had gone six months without uh drinking or using i had a relapse for five days and sh i came back to her she said congratulations she said you only drank and used five days out of this six month period I said, that's, that's not good. You know, she said, that is awesome. You are 91% successful in battling your addiction. My thought process went from self regret, uh, you know, hating myself for, for relapsing to, wow, I did my best and I'm 91% successful for all of you out there who are peers or mentors, please convey that positive that positive energy, even during a relapse, to someone who needs to hear that today. Please do that. And thank you 
very much for letting me speak today. I'm honored. Mark, that was outstanding. Melissa, Nathan, thank you so much for being here today. Um, thank you for our audience. We had a really great group, just so you know. Um, folks were very engaged. I, wanna, I appreciate your time. We will have a recording then for you all within the next two weeks, and we'll get that set up so that folks can see this presentation again. We do have a, um, that Jesse has put in our chat box, a, a short survey. So if folks wouldn't mind taking a, a, that opportunity to complete that survey to give us some feedback about today's presentation. And, and with that, though, I really want to say a, a genuine heartfelt thanks. There's just something special about you all. Um, Mark, it was fantastic. Um, Marcia, again, I, no words. You're amazing. Nathan, outstanding person. So thank you all. Appreciate your time today, every one of you. And we look forward then to seeing you then at our next presentations. All right, be well, everyone.